Hello guys and welcome to another David Zamaletta. My name is Serge and in today's video I got the dreaded start error problem on this 2003 Dodge Sprinter, Freightliner Sprinter, Mercedes Sprinter. Yeah, it's all of them unfortunately. But anyways, I was getting ready to do a leak off test. Hence all these pipes here. And as soon as I connected all of them, start error happened. So in this video, I'm going to talk about everything that I did that possibly caused this issue to occur. I'm also going to talk about all of the different solutions to the problem that you are you could be facing with. And sometimes it has nothing to do with the key or the immobilizer and rather your parts on the inside of the, of the mechanical ignition tumbler. So I'm going to talk about in very great detail. It may be interesting. Uh, for somebody that's dealing with this but if you haven't dealt with it like maybe it's going to seem like it's a little bit too much information but the thing is um i want to look at everything that's cheap that can be resolved um and talk about like everything that needs to be basically done at that that's that should be like your first step so take a look at this video i think you're going to find it interesting and maybe you're going to learn something that you uh, did not know before um so because i'm going to be showing some stuff and in a video after this, I'm gonna show you how to start it up with the screwdriver um, and basically test uh, the theory that I was actually talking about. And we'll see if that works. So I'll see you guys uh, in this video and enjoy it. Grab some coffee, I guess, and some donuts and enjoy the video. So prior to me even doing anything over here, okay, I decided to replace the housing on the key. So I have taken one of my older keys and, you know, one that I'm not using from a parts van and I decided to just take it apart and then just basically reassemble it. Uh, but in the process, I wasn't sure if I had the correct key because, you know, you have two different keys, two different circuit boards and stuff. And then I'm thinking, what if this is the wrong one? But anyways, I went and I checked that key inside plugged it in it wasn't even spinning so i'm thinking okay like good i caught it you know before i in installed the wrong key into the key fob um well i guess by doing that i caused a start error just by inserting the wrong key now a simple fix i mean this may or may not work would be to simply disconnect the battery uh, and just a negative cable if you don't have like nothing. Uh, but of course I do have, uh, and I have a computer that can basically do its thing for the immobilizer and hopefully get it started. So that is one of the options that I have. Maybe the option that I will take. So now I got to deal with the start error code. Let me show you before, before we proceed and then we'll decide how we want to go about it. So you could clearly see Put the key in this key does churn all of these things come on and then we got that dreaded start error on the screen that is not good so what happens with the start error is you not well and this key just just broke apart so yeah this is this was not a good housing you know to begin with but the one the one that i had was completely falling apart and they had it basically together with tape um i did order another one which i explained it in the video like i ordered a whole new housing um but yeah like now i'm kind of like wondering i mean what if i somehow messed up and put the electronics uh for a different key but i think uh when i was actually disassembling it i mean i recognized that the, the electronics that, that i needed i mean they appear to be wet a little bit um but they did not have any corrosion where the battery was however the other one that i disassembled had corrosion on the battery but now i need to go back and look at my video and see oh, if i, I just right looked at the video guys turns out the electronics when i actually put them aside and then once i pulled the other electronics out i went ahead and stuck the electronics that i actually needed to in a new key fob but yes i did mess up and i put the wrong key in there but then i remembered i'm thinking like wait a minute i think i'm putting the wrong key so then i went back to the vehicle and then I, I inserted both keys without all the electronics just like the metal key itself and so one of them would turn and the other one would not turn 
So I actually did install the correct one. But the weird thing is, I guess by me just installing that other key, you know, um, caused the start error to happen. What a weird thing. Um, cause, or maybe because I did churn it with the, with that other metal key and the, um, the electronics was not part of the whole deal. Maybe that signal did not read properly. And, uh, I mean, also the battery is dead in the key fob and, uh, it was dead prior to it. It only had like one battery versus having two. So it was still working without the battery. So anyways, I'm going to try to take my computer and see if I could fix it with a immobilizer. My computer, it's loading up guys. You know, what's interesting. It's always something with these printers. They will not keep you bored. That's for sure. But, um, let's see if, uh, resetting, uh, the immobilizer with my computer works. Put the key in second position. Starting up my, what's going on here? So let's just do like a quick diagnostic. See, see if we even have the code for it. That would be interesting. You know, I'm scanning it and I'm hearing the external fuel pump that's installed. It's working kind of weird. There's a lot of stops and like little pops and stuff that I'm hearing. Like right now it's actually pretty stable. But um, but yeah. So anyways, it's interesting that now I have a transmission control module code uh instrument cluster so we have uh immobilizer it says no fault code so maybe immobilizer does not throw a fault code even though there's a clearly a start error so we have master flow sensor code engine oil sensor glow plug so there are five master flow sensors so with the transmission control heater booster so let's see i'm just gonna enter the transmission control and just see what it gives me that is weird that i'm even having it okay so that's not giving me much we're just going to clear that code <clears throat> Let's go back. Apparently, that cleared. I'm just going to check the immobilizer. It says no trouble code. What I will do is, I don't know if this is going to help it or not. We're just going to clear all DTCs. It still was showing start error code over there. Let's see, it says wait 10 seconds. Now clearing fault memory. Switch ignition on, okay. Start error still there. Okay, clear fault, fault memory. Like that's completed, but that hasn't really changed anything, did it? So let's now exit out of this and we're gonna go to special function so we do have immobilizer reset let's just access that and hopefully it does just that still start error Please be in here because lately some of these functionalities are like not even available for certain sprinters. Okay, I'm gonna have to slow this down. I see Mercedes Benz. I mean, technically, it should just be Sprinter, but this is a Mercedes branded Dodge. Shows up as Freightliner when I scan it. 
Hopefully there's some good so news. Let's pull up this here. It's a disable key, smart key system, remote control, manual setup. I mean, let's see what this does. I mean, like there's a communication error. So I don't know if I'm by hitting yes, if that does anything, but obviously that's not I'm doing going back to scanning it. So we're just going to go into special function menu and see if there's anything here that we could do and into another thing here so this is a mobilizer i mean let's see if it gives me anything for the code no trouble code let's see if i could just clear the code still start air over there hitting okay switch ignition off hitting okay now clearing I mean, I hope I have some, some stuff that can happen here. So I'm gonna hit addition on, okay. Still start error. Clear fault memory completed, but that's in start error mode. Um, actuation test. Okay, let's see, lock doors. Okay, well that worked. Uh, unlock doors. So, okay. Another um, thing here, learn transponder key. So learn additional transponder key. I mean, I'm just gonna do this. So I'm basically chose an option erase all transponder keys and relearn the current one so let's see if that works it would suck to have a fancy unit like this and for nothing to be working i mean sure it's a 2003 van but still i mean i do have a sds possibly that's something i could do as well no, for this one but i'm hoping that i'm able to solve everything with this because technically this is why i bought it like it has everything on it you know uh, please wait it says okay this is the menu once i waited so instruction insert the transponder key to be learned into the ignition locks which ignition on still says start error but we're hitting okay here okay let's see Note, the random number of control modules WSP immobilizes has already been read out. If no encrypted random numbers is present from FD OK, that transponder must once again be read out and an invalid random number should sub subsequently be entered for this purpose and learning process restarted. Okay, interesting. I've never done this before, so. It says instruction, press F4 to enter the encrypted random number generated by FD, okay. Complete entry, key with F3. Um, warning, the number of incorrect entries is limited and result in self-locking out of control module. Encrypted random numbers, bunch of zeros. So I guess we start with a four. F4. Encrypted random number. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know what I'm doing, but that's the number that it was presenting me. So let's see. So, all right. What is this? Format 123, 0, 123. Encrypted uh, random number interesting so i mean i guess it's having me enter mm. i don't know what i should do but let's hit f4 okay i'm just gonna cancel that f4 again let's let's just try this one two three one two three one two three 
one two three so now it has that so complete entry with with key f3 so let's do f3 learning was not successful the encrypted random mode isn't valid the transponder is already valid eight transponder keys have already been learned what the heck how am i supposed to know that yeah, i don't know what to do i'm just gonna hit again Okay, insert the transponder key to be learned into the ignition lock, switch on. So let's do zeros this time. Transponder is already valid, it says. I don't know what's going on. I guess um, let's learn additional key. Switch ignition off, which I have. Let's wait for that. Insert the transponder key to be learned. Okay, let's, let's try. Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but um, let's just try something different. Let's just use a bunch of nines. I'm just gonna try this as a last means of resort because that other stuff wasn't working, so maybe this will. Communication error. Well, that's new. Okay, I guess I'm done guess I'm for now. Disconnect the negative battery terminal and see what that does. Hopefully that resets something. And I may have to look at the fuses. See if maybe we have a blown fuse. So guys, I disconnected the negative battery terminal. Um, probably had it disconnected about 30 minutes. And it's probably not long enough. But you know what? I'm anxious to find out that anything resolve itself. So. Also, I had to wrap the key in some plastic tape. Basically, ended up where where um, everything started. It was ripped up uh, in um, in duct tape. But anyways, start error, and of course, nothing. That's quite annoying. Boy, oh boy. Guys, we're going to disconnect the negative battery terminal. One more time. Well, before I, before I disconnect, I want to try something. I don't, I don't know why I'm hearing uh, fuel pump pumping when I thought that this was... Yeah, that is the battery from the fuel pump. Well, it's got a couple connections. It's got a, it's fused and it's got a black one here. So, it, so I guess it's going to the starter. Uh, what does this black one do because this looks like a negative and i had it connected over here well they had it connected over there i think we should come up with a better solution perhaps put it on firewall or something okay so i don't hear the pump and now it's working I guess it was touching just a little bit. 
and that was enough. So I'm thinking, why was that working when I had it disconnected? Well, that's why. Still says start air. Um, last time I had a start air, um, it was because it was a bad ignition switch in the tumbler. And I'll explain to you guys right now what I was faced with. So I'm disconnecting this, but I'm also going to disconnect um, the positive. Actually, I don't really mess with the positive. I'll leave the positive alone. I just forgot, this is kind of like, it's been repaired in such a way over here that this is temporary solution that works because the original bolt has broken off and I got things tied with the way that it is right now. So, I mean, this wire basically will need to get replaced. So is that negative cable right there. But we can't be throwing everything, you know, all the money at it because we don't, it's not even technically functional right now. Oh, I was going to do like a leak down test and apparently I can't even do it right now because I got an unexpected unexpected start error that I'm dealing with unfortunately. I all I gotta say is welcome to the sprinter ownership um you will be faced with many different challenges whether you like it or not so today wasn't expecting to really have to deal with a start error so there's a very good possibility I'm the one that caused it but how would I even know that that's that's gonna cause the thing all I've done was insert a sprinter key into the ignition tumbler. I didn't even turn it because it was not turning at all. Uh, so it did not rotate. Um, and I guess that was enough to cause a start error. And then I guess once I started to insert this, you know, this key back in there, um, it started appearing as a start error. And I keep going at it and trying to keep starting it because I was trying to spin the uh, engine over uh, initially, but I noticed the start error message uh, start popping up. So I guess it did not like it. It did not like the fact that I kept kept proceeding, you know, to, to turn the situation. So, well, that is unfortunate, um, but I do want to talk about this, guys. Um, last time I had to deal with the start error, this was something that was caused by randomness simply i took my 2006 printer to walmart everything's fine i come out of walmart tried to basically start it up guess what start error appeared so it did not allow me to start it so i actually had to tow the vehicle home and i have this on my channel probably like five years ago this was happening and turns out one of the issues was whenever is i would shut uh the van off the display was still staying on and when you open up the door it would have beeping that would occur so i guess i guess uh, the computer was thinking that that the key is still turned okay um or not turned all the way or like not turned all the way off you know and part of the reason is over here behind uh this behind this key well first i'll tell you this plastic thing right here this is this is an antenna it picks up the single signal from your key then takes it up to the immobilizer and then tells the computer hey everything's okay and then you're cleared but what you don't know that in this ignition tumbler here, which is a metal part, in the back of it, you have um, you have the electronics that plug in. So the actual uh, electronic ignition switch that plugs in in the back. That electronic ignition switch can be simply turned by a screwdriver. Um, but at the very least, the key needs to be inside like this. But when the electronic ignition switch is removed so you could turn it when you put this key in there like this very good chance that the plastics whatever's in here is going to fall out okay and believe it or not 
that is actually the fail point of these ignition uh, switches here. The plastics get dislodged and twisted in such a way that when you put the key in, and even though you're putting the key all the way, you're turning it, it's not recognizing the fact that the key is actually turned all the way. So it might engage, like, let's say, like a second position where I could actually, well, second position where I could actually read it right here. And there's a third position at which start. Let me see. Yeah. Let's turn this key off. You see those lines? This is uh, line one, two, and three. So when we insert the key, I want you to see that it's right now at position zero. So when you turn it to position one, still kind of like nothing happens. Then you turn to position two. So that's what you're talking about is like when you're trying to, uh, you know, like diagnose it. And then you switch to position three like this to start it. So what happens is, as you're trying to start it, this would actually not go all the way. And based on what I'm looking, you see how like that's nice and even, evenly turned? Well, look, that does not go all the way. You see? That key does not go all the way. And I've never actually done that test before, but see like now it went all the way. But it wasn't, guys. I actually was twisting it the whole time. Like right now, look. This is not going all the way. That's not going all the way. That's not going all the way. And I'm, guys, I'm actually doing it. Seriously. All the way. Like now, it went all the way. And that's the problem. So I believe in this situation, we're dealing with an ignition. Well, the ignition on. tumbler is the actual mechanical portion of this key which has the plastics on the inside that basically allow it to churn how it how it churns and those plastics they get dislodged they get erased and they kind of get like bent out of shape so what you can do is kind of rebuild it on your own maybe you have another ignition switch tumbler from a different vehicle the plastics on the inside is what you need. So if you can find the plastics that would actually work, you could technically take those plastics and insert them and into the um, mechanical ignition tumbler, um, allowing you to then sort of like rebuild your mechanical ignition switch. And I'm saying these things properly so that we're not gonna get these things confused from, from the electronic ignition switch, which is plastic. Um, in doing so, now the key is going to turn properly where it needs to, and it's actually going to properly, uh, turn, uh, on the electronic ignition switch, because that's actually what you're trying to do. So when the key is, is in and it doesn't twist all the way to the right, well, the signal on the electronic ignition switch never gets turned on. And, uh, there is a way to actually test this to see if this is really what's going on. And that's by me disassembling the um, the steering column. And I guess with the battery being unplugged right now, you know, we're just gonna leave that alone. So looks like regardless, I have to deal with this. Um, so I'm going to disassemble to remove this. all of these plastics here, disassemble it and remove the fuse panel. So I guess with the battery being disconnected, this is ideal and then once i remove the fuse panel from here i'm gonna have to actually make a whole separate video from this because this is just me explaining and i'm gonna also explain that on the other video but it's gonna be like not as detailed because we're gonna de we're just gonna be dealing with the, uh, the actual switch but i'm gonna show you kind of like over here kind of like what you gotta do so you gotta remove this here and obviously disassemble this whole plastics then uh the the um the fuse panel is going to be exposed here. You will then need to carefully disconnect the fuse panel and pull it back some. Then you will see the uh, electronic ignition switch being plugged into the fuse panel. The wires will be going to it. You will need to, you could keep it still plugged in, uh, but you will need to then unplug the electronic ignition switch 
from the actual tumbler. Just unplug it and you could like actually have it facing out right here. So then what you're gonna need to do is push those plastics out with this key. Just kind of like push on them that way they kind of fall out because in my case, you could tell that they're bad. Just push them out carefully, keep them together how they are and just set it down how it was for, ins for later inspection. But the way you test it, if that was actually the problem, is you need to insert this key. And the reason I told you to take the plastics out because they're gonna fall out if you don't, okay? And when they fall out, they're gonna fall in such a way that you will probably not know how to put it back together and uh, you might lose some parts or think you lost some parts. So that's why it's very important. Put your hand there when you remove the electronic ignition switch, just insert the key and that will simply, you know, maybe wiggle it a little bit, but it's gonna, <coughs> or like churn it. That will cause the plastics to <coughs> come out. <coughs> so if the plastic pieces don't come out, reach in there with like a pick, and get them out when you do that just set them aside because if that wasn't your problem you know you'll inspect and you could see that okay the plastics are fine or maybe you you look at them and, and they're not and then you could make a decision later on but you could test it without having those plastic pieces by simply having the key inside here and at this point you're no longer going to need to turn the key you just need to have it inserted so that it's going the key is going to be near this ring here which is your antenna. And you will then uh, need to take a flathead screwdriver. Now be careful, Take get the right size, biggest flathead screwdriver you can get because you can damage the electronic ignition switch. So you will then carefully start turning it to the third position. And if you turn it all the way, the start error technically should disappear or not appear to begin with because now with the battery would be disconnected once you reconnect it hopefully it cleared itself and then when you put the key in the you know like when you turn the actual electronic ignition switch with the screwdriver it will start and that's how you know that um, your ignition switch is bad so earlier I was saying how you know you'll you know like okay so if it's obviously bad and it turned on with a screwdriver it, you could basically find out that yes, uh, the mechanical uh, ignition switch tumbler is technically bad, but technically it's not bad. What am I? What am I saying? Like why? Like why am I saying it's not bad? Well, the actual mechanicals has not failed, most likely, and it's just the plastic pieces on the inside. If you have those same plastic pieces from another van. Or maybe you could order them online if they sell, somebody sells those parts. You can use those parts. But what I have done in the past is I've removed those plastics and I've noticed they're kind of like dislodged. And all I did is made a little correction, put them back how they're supposed to be, slid them back in there. And now the key was turning all the way because there might be something getting stuck and it's not allowing you to turn. As, as you could see with me now turning the key, the key should line up with the line. It just now lined up. Now it doesn't line up. Now it lines up. Now it lines up. Now it lines up again and again. But I guess when, when I put it to second position, then I try to turn it, it doesn't always go back. Like even right here, first, posi first position, second, third, doesn't allow it. Now when I switch to the back, it works. Now second position, because I was putting in like, let's see, second position, leave it. Now that works. But a lot of times, you know, it says put the key on, off, you know, second position. See, now it doesn't want to go, you know. And I could possibly trick this into starting if I just simply do it right away instead of putting it to second position and then, you know, like with the, with the weight. So I'll give this a try right now. I mean, I got like nothing to lose. I connected the, the, the battery, so let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, it still says start error. Doesn't register right away. Look. But if I hold it, now it has a start error. So 
I'll need to make a separate video of me disassembling all of these pieces here and then trying to start it with a screwdriver and I'm hoping that's going to work. I'm gonna work on it now, but in the meantime, I'm gonna post this video for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. 